Hi, welcome to Oka Hamster. Today I'll be viewing an Amcrest 1080p outdoor Wi-Fi Boto camera and I've mounted it right up there. Mounting is very simple, just three screws and it's also connected to my my network at home through Wi-Fi, not wire connection. So that's why the image quality would be a little bit choppy at times. Now, currently this is a live stream. Just walk in front of the camera. There I am. And just wave. I'm currently about hmm, 10 feet from the camera. What I'm going to do right now is show the setup menu for this. Let me go to the camera's configuration or video page. It's at 1080p, 30 frames per second. I set it to variable bitrate, but at most at 2, 2,000 kilobytes bitrate. This camera doesn't have a built-in micro SD card, but what I can do is have it store on the FTP servers. For example, I can have the store on my Synology or my QNAP, or better yet, just have the surveillance station apps on those Synology or QNAP to manage the server. That's possible too. There are also third party, other third party apps out there that you can run on your local computer to manage the recordings and the videos stored for this camera. Upgrading this camera is also very simple. Just go to the systems, upgrade section, and just click over here, download the latest. It'll bring me to another website, which is the Ancrest support website, where I can download the latest firmware. And as of today, I am using the latest firmware out there. I'm currently 60 feet from the camera, and it can't pick up the words on my shirt. Definitely not clearly. It can see cars or people walk by, but not capture the words, any wording, for example, like license plates. What I'm gonna do is walk closer to one about 60 feet. Now I'm about 50 feet from the camera. And it's a little bit more clear, not, not as sharp. On my iPhone here, let me zoom in. If I zoom in, I can sort of make out, I can make out the seven, but not so much the nine. Now I'm walk closer. Now I'm about 30 feet from the camera. And yeah, I think at 30 feet, it can clearly pick up all the wordings on my shirt. So if you're trying to watch like a car park or a driveway, 30 feet is a good number to use if you want to try and capture license plates. Then on my iPhone here, same. Now I'm able to capture, see the words on my shirt clearly. And now a little bit closer. So now I'm about 20 feet away and I can clearly capture the wordings on my shirt and also my facial features and expressions. When I monitor live streams, the frame rate was often 22 frames per second. And to me, that's not that big of a deal because there's no motion blur. For example, if I were to walk this way, you can still see my facial features the words on my shirt, you can still follow it, even though it's at lower frame rate. It's a little bit choppier, but it's not as bad as their competitors. Whenever I view other outdoor cameras in the past, I always said that I would recommend hardwiring it in terms of the network connection. Don't just rely on the Wi-Fi, because I live in Jersey, and I'm about less than 15 miles from the city, and there are, this is a very congested to where I live. So, and this camera only works on a 2.4 gigahertz spectrum, not the 5 gigahertz spectrum. What that means is I can get a lot of interference on the 2.4 devices such as baby monitors, microwaves, scanners. Just, there's so many things that will interfere with Wi-Fi connection. Now I want to demonstrate how this IP camera performs at night. I'm going to lower the brightness on my screen and the red ring, that's the IP camera's infrared LEDs. And it's definitely visible at night, considering there's so many of them. And currently I'm about 2.5 meters, 8.3 feet. And you can see me pretty clearly. I'm wearing a black shirt, but the image is grayscale right now. I'll move further away. And currently I'm about 20 feet. The frame rate is pretty good. The image quality is more pixelated at night. Now I'm standing far, pretty far. I'm about 41 feet away. You cannot see any of my facial features. And uh, you can't, you can barely make out what I'm doing. Just wave my hands. And there's no point 
walking any further away because, well, you can't really see any sort of detail. I'm still viewing the mainstream, not the substream. And for the mainstream, I go to setup, it's at 1080p, 30 frames per second, 2 megabits for the bitrate. I have batch of live view. And on my iPhone here, I'm going to zoom in, just pinch zoom. Can't really see it in my facial features. On my Android device, I'm also going to launch the MCrest Pro app. There I am. And I'm going to zoom in a bit. Pinch zoom. Can't really see any of my facial features. I'm going to walk towards. Currently, I am 13 feet away. And at 13 feet, now you can see my eyebrows, my nose. And back to the iPhone. iPhone 13 feet. Nighttime performance is just okay. Uh, I won't say it's good, it's just okay. Currently, I'm standing about 13 feet from the camera, and you can see my facial features. There isn't that much motion blur, which is good. I'm gonna walk closer towards the camera until my face just, or my shirt just become all white. Now at this point, um, my face, I can't can barely see my eyebrows, and I'm standing about five and a half feet. So I'll say the optimal range for watching human subjects at night is between six feet and 13 feet. If you're trying to watch vehicles, cars, larger like trucks, and in that case, it can exceed 13 feet. Anything that's less than six feet, it will be too bright. There'll be too much infrared LED bouncing off the subject. For the pros and cons, very easy setup process. It took less than five minutes. I can view it on my smartphone, my computer, my tablet. And even if I was away from home, I can still view it on my mobile device using their Amcrest Pro app. And I can be in Iceland, different country, with open internet, it doesn't really matter. Now, I like how this unit is weatherproof. Um, I can leave it out in the rain, sleet, snow. I live in Jersey, so it's pretty humid. For daytime video quality, it is good. Nighttime video quality is just decent. Uh, in, in the daytime, as I demonstrated, I can be 50, uh, 50 feet away. If it was a vehicle, you can clearly see it. If it was a person, you can't really see the facial features. At nighttime, well, if I was that far away, you just see an object. Uh, you don't really see any facial feature unless I walked closer to about 13 feet to the camera. This unit only operates on a 2.4 gigahertz spectrum on the AOT.11B, G, or N. And when I demonstrated the unit, I had it connected through Wi-Fi, not the network cable. What I would recommend for folks out there is to connect through the network cable. That way you're getting a more consistent connection. Mounting this was very simple with their provided tools, but what I would like to point out is positioning this unit was not that simple. For example, I was trying to place this to the right of my breezeway. That way I can watch more of my, my back door and whoever walks to my back door. But I can't do that because, for example, this is the unit right side up, and I can't turn it because the antenna is blocking it. What I should have done, what I hope they did, was place the antenna up here or anywhere that it's not blocking the bow joint. The antenna could have been placed better. What I hope they'll change for the future release is change the position of the antenna, improve the nighttime image quality, and increase the field of view. But besides that, overall, this is still a good camera. It offers the most value for our money, and I would still recommend it. Well, thanks for watching this review. If you guys have any questions, comments, suggestions, feel free to contact me. Thanks for watching with our hamster.